What's going on you guys, Frost here and I'm back with another video. In this video I'll be making a Rek'Sai guide. She was recently buffed, this patch actually, and she's actually really strong right now. A lot of people don't know it yet, but if you build her correctly and go for like a scaling type of build, farm a bit in the early game, you can actually win a lot of games right now. I think my win rate on her should be about... I'd say 95% at this point over like a good 30 games, so it's actually really stupid. So I'm gonna give you guys my build, how I built Rek'Sai, and yeah, let's get right into it. This is the rune page I use on Rek'Sai. I go for 9 scaling attack damage reds, I go for 9 scaling armor seals, I go for 9 scaling magic resist glyphs, and then I go for attack speed in the quints. Now, the scaling attack damage reds, some of you might be like, wait, why do you go for those? Now... This is the reason Rek'Sai doesn't need help early on really clearing her jungle. She is fine just doing it. And this will help you more later in the game with your AD scalings. Honestly, her bonus AD scalings right now are insane. And this is going to give you, I think it's like, yeah, about 22 attack damage on level 18. That's quite a lot of attack damage extra to get on her scaling. And since her like, bonus AD ratios are this good right now, she actually gains a lot of damage. Um, the scaling ones beat the flat ones at about level 7, level 8-ish right there. So it's actually quite early on that you get the power spike going on Rek'Sai. Pretty much as soon as you pick up a cleaver in, um, on her, she's going to deal way more damage than if you were to go for the flat attack damage ones. Now again, for the same reason, she doesn't really have trouble clearing early on. So you can literally just take the scaling armor ones and the scaling magic resist ones. I prefer getting the um, scaling armor over scaling health on Rek'Sai because you can, like, you stack a lot of health items on Rek'Sai, so having more armor stats out of your runes is better than having more health stats out of your runes, so that's why I go for those. And then it's a like scaling here because, honestly, you don't really need the CDR. You, are all well, you already build a lot of cooldown reduction just in your build in general, so in certain builds you could overcap it and that would not be good, so that's why I just take these. And attack speed is what you need to help you help clear early on. That's the only thing you need is just a little bit of attack speed. So three quins will do. Then moving on to the masteries. Uh, this is the this is the mastery page I use on Rek'Sai. I go for attack speed here because again it's the thing to help you clear in the early game. Then fresh blood for just a little bit of extra burst damage as soon as you pop out on someone. So you knock them up. You get the auto attack when you knock them up, and then you start queuing. This is just gonna increase your damage a little bit. So more burst damage is definitely useful. I pick one point in Vampirism, four points here. I honestly just do the, the four points here for the for the base stats. And I prefer to get the one point here just to have a little bit more sustain. Now, Battle Trans is the one you want to pick up next. Because you're going to be in combat for a little bit, most situations. You do not want to be taking extra damage. So, definitely Battle Trans to get that 3% extra is what I go for. Then I take uh, Battering Blows for Armor Penetration. Obviously, like, Rek'Sai has so much AD scaling right now that Armor Pen is definitely the thing you want. And you pick the Keystone Fervor of Battle. This is by far the best keystone you can go for on Rek'Sai right now because it gives you extra AD as soon as you stack things up. So you can knock someone in the air, get a free auto attack, then reset that auto attack with a Q. And later on in the game you can reset the next auto attack with a Titanic Hydra as well. So it's pretty quick burst damage. It's going to give you a real easy 8 stacks on Rek'Sai. And as soon as you get those 8 stacks, especially late game, you get 8 AD for each stack. Which means 8 times 8 get a lot of extra AD. So... Combine that with the scaling she has on her um, on, her, on her abilities. It's going to give your E way more true damage. It's just going to overall increase like all the damage you do. Your ult's going to deal more damage, everything. So that's definitely the keystone you want to go for. Now moving on, I will, I will go for 12 points in the resolve tree. I take unyielding for 5% bonus armor and magic resist. You are still building quite tanky on Rek'Sai and you really want to be tanky. So getting this 5% bonus armor and magic resist is definitely the way to go. This health recovery thing doesn't really help you a whole lot then i take tough skin i prefer taking two less damage like on every auto attack it saves you a bit of health in the jungle but it can also save you a lot of damage in like fights and all that so definitely i prefer this you don't really need explorer too much on Rexa. you have a lot of tunnels to get around pretty quickly so it's yeah then i take runic armor it increases your health regeneration and that pretty much means that once you burrow with some fury on you you'll regain more hp so that's why you go for this and then I take Perseverance on Rek'Sai to help me sustain when I get low. It actually like does a lot for you, This just this one point right there. The other thing you could go for is Inside if you want to have a little bit of like, Summoner Spell cooldown, I guess. 
I mean, Fear Fearless is also not bad. Like all of these three are all of these three are val like um, valid options, but I personally would go for the Perseverance one since it will help you um, just sustain in general. It will help you clear your jungle camps, especially early game if you maybe get invaded or anything. If you walk into some trouble, instant trouble. In Whoa! If you walk into some trouble, damn, it's hard to say trouble, man. Holy shit! So this will help you sustain back up if that happens. Then moving on to the item build. This is the item build I have on Rek'Sai. You, every game, want to start with a machete and a refillable potion. This is just a standard start. You go for a machete because, well, Rek'Sai auto-attacks, like, a lot. And it's the main way for her to kill her camps. So, definitely machete is the way to go. And then this refillable potion is more than enough sustain. So you don't need to go three health potions. This will be just fine. Now, the core build you want to go for, you want to rush that warrior enchant. The blue smite most games... I guess, like, heavy burst champions on the enemy team, like, a lot of heavy burst champions on the enemy team, you could go red smite to survive. But in most scenarios, blue smite is the best option because it helps you catch people easier. It also increases your burst damage a little bit, but it's main mainly because it just helps you catch people and get under them and then knock them off to get the uh, combo going. So, blue smite into ninja tabai. Ninja tabai are probably the best boots in the game right now. They block a lot, a lot of damage. I mean, you also want to switch these boots out for mercs. It just either one of the two mercs is if they have heavy CC or heavy magic damage. Ninja Daba is just for any physical damage. So yeah, and then the main item to increase your damage by insane amounts is the Black Cleaver. This item will give you a lot, a lot of armor penetration as well. This doesn't affect your E as much because you always want to use your E once you um, max it out. So it will do true damage every time. But this will increase the overall damage from the rest of your abilities a lot. Since you have really good AD scalings and overall good AD damage. Now this also gives you 400 HP and 40 attack damage. Plus 20% CDR. And combine that 20% with this 10% from your warrior enchant. You'll have an easy 30% CDR. And then you could buy an item that gives you CDR later. But 30% is more than enough on Rek'Sai. Well main your ult cooldown is about 30 seconds on the max rank. With just 30%. So it really like... You know, it's a low cooldown anyway. You don't really need more CDR than this. So these items will just suffice. I mean, if you really want that 10% CDR, I guess you could get them in your runes. But I definitely just take the scaling CDR, uh, scaling magic resist in the glyphs instead. Now, after this core, this is what you pretty much build every game. I mean, these boots are in, like interchangeable with the mercs. But yeah, that's what you pretty much build every game. You have a couple of optional items. So yeah, this... Renduance is a really good item right now because a lot of AD carries tend to go for like a cheesy type of crit build. They tend to just build full 100% crit and kind of ignore like armor pen and all that. Also Yasuo and all those champions that tend to go for a lot of crit. Renduance is a really good item against them because it removes 20% damage taken from like critical attacks. Combine that with Ninja Tabai, you're gonna reduce a lot, a lot of damage they can deal to you. And then you easily are able to 1v1 them at pretty much any point in the game because the damage... It's reduced so much onto you and you deal so much damage to them that you can literally just one shot them even if they like try to retaliate it, w it like it won't matter so renderings is probably the item i will go for most games but if they don't have like any type of crit if they don't have an ad carry that really goes for crit let's say Callista, for example they tend to build more like like non-crit but like more scaling damage type of de deal with like the uh, blade of rune king and all that then this isn't the best item. In that case, you can go for the Deadman's Plate instead. This is pretty much like interchangeable between Randuins or Deadman's Plate, depending on if they have crit or not. Now, after you pick up either one of those two items in this slot, you want to build a Magic Resist item pretty much every game. Unless, of course, they are full AD, but in that case, you can just pick up Randuins and Deadman's Plate and be done with it. But if they don't... If they're not full AD, pretty much, you want to build a Magic Resist item. And usually, that Magic Resist item for me will be the Stone Plate in this slot. So it will kind of look like this. You will have bought probably this item in most games. And then you just pick up a Stone Plate right after that. Stone Plate will make you so insanely tanky. Because it will give you pretty much 80 Magic Resist. Like, really. It's realistic that you're going to have, like, 3 plus enemies around this later in the game. Because it is your 5th item. So you'll most likely be in team fighting stage by then. And it's going to just give you like, it gives, pretty much gives you 80 armor, 80 magic resist. And then you can also double your health as soon as you pop the active when you're close to three people. So it's going to make you insanely tanky and pretty much unkillable whilst you are like 
a real big threat to the enemy team still because you have a lot of damage built right there. Now to finish that build off and finish the six items off, I will usually always go for the Titanic Hydra. It's most games the best item since it provides you with a second auto attack reset pretty much. You can use auto attack into uh, Rex Rek Q and then right after you do that you can go into Titanic Hydra. Which means you instantly get like three auto attacks on them and you stack your fervor really fast. Also the Titanic Hydra with the, the way you've built before, the amount of health you've stacked right here is going to really like increase your damage a lot. This allows you to just one shot like literally anything honestly. You deal so much damage that your opponent won't matter. Even if it's if it's a tank champion or like a tanky frontliner and you're like like your goal is to peel late, very late game. So you can literally just knock them up and hit him a couple times and he literally would just die because you can use this to get your fury up really fast because you knock him up with your W. Then you get a free auto attack into another free auto attack from the Q and then this will give you a lost auto attack that goes it's really fast, pretty much instant, honestly, if you do it correctly. And then your Fury will be full, and you can then E for like 600 true damage on the tank. And they will pretty much die. So that's like optimal. This is probably what I would build every single game. The other thing you could switch it out for if they don't really have... Like, if they're more of AP heavy comp, let's say they have like maybe 180 type of champion. You could also uh, consider switching out the random ones. If that champion isn't a crit-based champion, right? If it's like a Callista AD carry or something, and that's like their only... Um, physical damage dealer, you could switch this Randuins out for the Spirit Visage instead, and then just have more magic resist um, together with these two items. This will still give you armor, this will still give you armor, and then the Titanic Hydra will still finish off the build to deal a lot of damage. So that is pretty much the Rek'Sai build. If you have any questions, make sure to ask them in the comments below, and without any further ado, let's get right into the gameplay now. Alright, welcome to the gameplay section of this guide. As you see, I'm playing Rek'Sai, obviously, against the Lee Sin this game. It is actually a pretty good matchup for Rek'Sai, since um, she's able to cancel Lee Sin's Qs. So, as soon as Lee Sin hits a Q on you and then dashes towards you, if you time your, like, pop-up correctly, your unburrow correctly, you can, um, like, pop him out of his Q and it won't deal any damage to you. So, you have a real advantage on that one. You can probably see it a couple times this game, because I'm pretty sure it would have happened. I don't remember this game too well, but the more the surprise for me, right? Alright, so this game, um, I'm starting the bot side because I prefer ganking the um, top lane really quickly, especially this matchup. Cannon is likely going to push into the Darius, which means that he'll be like further in the lane, which if I just like E over this wall or something, or maybe even just walk around casually, I can get behind him. I can get the free knock up on him and that should be a kill. So in that scenario, I'm just going to start here. Also, if that doesn't pan out too well, let's say Darius, by some miracle, gets a solo kill on Cannon, then um, the LeBlanc gank on the Ari is still really good because you can just snare the Ari, and then I can literally just get the free knockup while she's snared and she should die as well. So these are the real ganks I'm able to do. Also, Caitlyn tends to push in bot lane quite a bit, so going for like a top start and then rushing towards bot lane is probably not going to work that well. So for that reason, I am starting right here and clearing upwards. Lee Sin's most likely doing the same thing, because most Lee Sin players do. And then I can also try to fight him on top lane as well, because I win the 1v1. Right, right here. The optimal thing is if your support can tank like two hits for you, that would be great, which is what Thresh did for me this game. You usually just ask for that. It just saves you that little bit of health that you, um, wait, that you need to save. Right here, do the Gromp. Usually, I try to save my Smite for, uh, like, the red buff itself. Wait, re <laughs> wow, the Darius actually got the solo kill on Cannon. Okay, I guess that uh, plants out of the window. I usually save my Smite for the red buff because you don't really need it all that much. If you, like, unless you get a terrible leash, then in that case, you might need it. But in other situations, it's just better to save for the red buff because it deals a lot of damage to you. And with the, with the way you clear, you won't be ha um, having your second Smite up yet. So if you use it somewhere else, then it's going to be kind of hard to clear the red buff without taking too much damage. That's usually what I do. It looks like I'm still looking for the gank on cannon here. This right here, you can E over this wall, which closes a lot of distance and put cannon in a quite an awkward position. Alright, flash for the knock up there. Darius gets the hook. Looks like cannon gets out with the flash, which, I mean, for me that's fine. I'll take those types of ganks if I can just force a flash out of the top laner. Especially cannon. If Darius can then get close to him, he doesn't really have any way to escape. 
and that is actually not too bad. I'll gladly ta trade my fresh for um, my flash for a laner's flash. So that's what I did there. Now here I'm just gonna keep on clearing. I think the gank I will look for next is probably on mid lane. But I might also actually also back soon. If LeBlanc can land the the, the the like the binding on her, I can get under her and get a free kill. Also, your uh, Unborrow does a lot of damage right now because the AD scaling is like 0.8 on bonus AD. So it, it can be used to kill, for example, all the small ones in this camp, like the really small ones. If you Unborrow on them, it will one-shot them all. It also is able to uh, finish off certain camps to save you a little bit of time. Now here I figured some of his top camp might be up. He was just bot lane, so I could just um, go in there and like take some of his camps. Counter jungling is very important, so might as well put the Lee Sin behind for going bot lane. Right here, I think Wolves are too risky to go for because he could be there soon. And he was there soon, so that's why I just take the Gromp and like um, walk away pretty much. Alright, I'm back with the 1200 gold, which is going to be a pretty good back for me. It's going to allow me to get a blue smite with boots. I usually go for a lot of mobility um, type of items on Rek'Sai very early on, so boots with blue smite will be a pretty common back for me. In this case, I... I guess forgot to pick up a control ward because usually I'll just pick up a control ward as well. It's very important to pick up those control wards. So if you guys like have the money for control wards, buy control wards. I guess I wasn't paying any attention or something like that. Right, right here. Blue Smite and Boots will offer me a very nice um, gank potential on something. Because I will have a lot of mobility and the ability to slow them as well. So it's pretty good for me. Now, mainly here, just keep clearing. Get myself like that farm. Like I went for a lot of scaling in my runes. So um, being able to scale up in levels early on in the game is really what you want. And then as soon as you hit like about level 5, level 6. Then a lot of ganks start happening. Because that's where you're actually going to be really strong. And that's where your scaling like runes really start to catch up. Now Lisa makes a weird play here. Tries to go for like the, the cheesy Q on the LeBlanc or something. But then gets caught out completely and probably just dies here. Yeah he just dies here. Wow. I think I just go back here for double long sword. And again, man, what the fuck am I doing? Dude, buy a control ward. Holy shit. I have 100 gold. I should just buy a control ward. I'm not sure what I'm doing. Alright, cool. Whatever. Right there, by the way, you. Uh, I'll just slow it down. This is what you should always do on everything. Uh, especially early game because it's just more efficient. I'll just slow it down right now. Right here. I manually unburrow on this blue buff. I do an auto attack and then I start queuing. That's definitely something you want to remember on Rek'Sai. It's the main way to clear and the, the most efficient way to deal damage to something. Because you can get a free auto attack whilst you knock him up. And then you can use your Q to auto attack reset. Now here the bot, looking for the bot lane gank. Fresh can just easily take the engage on this and I can just walk in. I'm level 6 as well. So there's really not much for them to escape from. Like He, he might just walk away right here but I just ult. Get on top of him. Do get exhausted though, actually. That's, that saves Twitch's life. Good exhaust from the Lulu there. Wait, Lee Sin goes in. I block his Q damage with him. Actually, I can show you that. I block my Q uh, block his Q damage with my knockup, I do believe. Alright. Fast forward a little bit. I get exhausted here, so he takes way less damage. That normally would have killed him, but in this case, it didn't. Alright, I burrow here. And I believe that as soon as he dashes in, right here... Right before the damage actually applies, I knock him up into the air, so the damage goes away. And then he uh, just loses a lot of damage. He went in. He's going to get hooked by Thresh and probably die. Oh, actually, he hooks Twitch. Actually, that's a pretty good call, honestly. You can get the free kill on Twitch here. Alright, I get the Q on him. I believe I get the Q on him as well. Yeah. I just sniped the Lee Sin. Caitlyn flashed for that. Kind of wasting it, I guess. But I guess you couldn't have known that I would have queued that. So I get a double kill here, which is not bad. Like, that's going to really help me skill. I think on the next back, I couldn't afford this, the uh, Warrior Enchant, probably. Or maybe actually I'm pretty close. Yeah, don't have enough money yet. I'm just going to clear this and that should probably give me enough. Combined with wolves maybe. I'm not sure when I back. I, I back when I have it most likely. So I probably have enough now. Yeah, I have enough. Uh, this time I buy a control ward. Alright, finally. I actually al I pre uh, probably already had enough. Now that I look at the girl I had. This time I buy my control ward finally, dude. Holy shit. Right, all I want to do right now is just completely clear it down because there's a lot of camps for me to take. And you just want to be able to uh, scale up really well as Rek'Sai. 
you will have a lot of 1v1 potential at this point in the game as soon as you pick up your jungle item to any laner really like you can pretty much kill anything 1v1 and you should really abuse that so you see you probably see me um look for a lot of ganks like just not even when the laner is there just straight up 1v1s with laners Right. Darius went bot lane here with teleport, so I am just gonna run top lane to cover this turret right here. Make sure that Cannon doesn't pick up a random first blood turret for us, and yeah, that's really what I'm doing. I have easily the potential to 1v1 this guy, and I probably will go for it, I think. Right, right here, get the auto, like, knock him up, get the auto attack on him, and then here, just kill him. That ult was very unnecessary, actually. What? He probably would have died already from just burn damage straight up. I'm not sure why I ulted there, honestly. Maybe to just disrespect him or something. Ult's a pretty low cooldown, but I think that was not the way to go on that one. But yeah, all the 1v1 potential there. Also, Cannon is very far behind, so... Pretty easy kill. I think I'm just gonna try to get as much damage on top turret here as I possibly can. Maybe even try to force um, the, the first turret pickup. Probably not fa fast enough, actually, now that I look at the map. I d don't think I'll get it. Do get a lot of damage onto it though. I kind of shows back in lane. I might actually try to cheese him here. Do I try to cheese him? Because if he walks up anywhere here, I can just E onto him. Like E close to him, knock him up again. I have blue smite ready, so I think he just dies. What does he do? Yeah, he walks up. He thinks I backed off and gets caught again. Blue smite him to slow him down. Darius will cripple him as well to slow him down. And we just get a free, <laughs> another free kill. If he goes onto me right now, I'll probably just knock him off so he does he knows that and probably just doesn't go for it. Also, he's pretty behind. Level 7 to my level 9. So I don't think he'll go for it either way. Right, this back's pretty good. I think I can pick up, yeah, pick up Mercs here. To, along with the Kindle Gem, yeah. Pretty, I pretty much had enough gold for that, so that's why I bought it. I go for Mercs this game because Ari, Charm, Lulu, Polymorph, and Cannon's ultimate. It's gonna be a lot of their CC. I'm not too worried about, like... Auto attack damage really because Cannon's very far behind and the Twitch also isn't doing too hot. So I can just afford to go for Mercs here and then um, a later armor item will fix all the armor problems that I have. I just want to be able to reduce the CC. Fresh really low there. Follow that lantern block the Lee Sin Q. I think I can just like, yeah, that's a really easy one to, to get kills with. <laughs> wow, LeBlanc, damn, alright. I guess that's a kill secured, right? All that matters. Right here, I'm just looking to fight people, honestly. If he walks this way, then I can still get him. Or like, right here, I'm just looking into his jungle. Place the pink ward there. This is a spot I like to place, uh, I like to place the ward in later on, as soon as we already have some control in the game, because it allows you to get a lot of vision. Like, to where, for example, bolt roams towards mid lane, or like the jungler walks here to clear camps with. Oh wait, I'll rewind this a little bit, because this is uh, one of those classic 1v1s I'd go for on Rek'Sai a lot. So R is pushing mid lane. She's standing in a really bad position. She doesn't have ult up either. So, at least not right here. So blue smite her. Knock her up. Get the free auto attack whilst knocked up. Reset that auto attack with Q. Get my stacks to full and then just E her for a lot of true damage and kill her. This is what you can literally do to like pretty much every lane at this point with Rek'Sai because you deal so much damage with your um, overall combo. So you can walk into any lane and get that gank off. Wait, I think I misclicked there and went actually went into my tunnel. Damn. As you can see, the W, the unborrowed, does a lot, a lot of damage. I pretty much one-shot the entire camp whilst, like, I mean, it was low, sure, but I one-shot all those creeps with just unborrowing. Probably here will be a perfect example of your AC where you can use your own burrow to kill shit with. I'll use it probably here, yep. See, the unburrow kills everything. That wasn't the Q, that was the unburrow. Right here, I back for probably like a phage. Yeah, there we go. Pick up that phage, part of the black lever. Black lever, definitely the item you want to rush. At this point, just looking to get the red buff. Red buff is going to be really helpful in just killing people easily. Now again, Darius teleported top lane, so I'm trying to rotate towards maybe mid lane slash top lane to get some pressure there. Because there's no way I'm going to be bolt in time for that fight, so might as well get some other pressure. Now, both their top laner and their mid laner are here. And I have a really good chance of just, like, straight up going for that fight as soon as LeBlanc shows up. They have a lot of CC, which means that I can't really um, go for this right now. Actually, I'd, I probably didn't know that Cannon's ult was down. If I knew that, I probably would have just gone in. I think I would have literally just gone in if I knew. He gets the snare. I might be able to snipe him with Q. Do I go for it? I don't. 
Here, I'm pretty sure the red's up, so I'm just gonna go for it. It is actually up. Pick this up. I think at this point, I'll just go for the dragon or something. Actually, I see Twitch bot lane here. This is gonna be a perfect example of how much burst damage you have from Rek'Sai. I'll just go on him. Right here, knock him up, auto attack into a reset with Q, and then just bite him to death. That's one sad thrash flash. I still have ult, so if she like tries to get out or something, she will still die. That's a lot of uh, like a very good um, thing to chase people with. If they were to flash away, your ult's easily gonna be able to just catch them as soon as you hit them once. Or you can try to snipe people with the burrowed mode Q and then ult that target as well. So it can be a really good execute tool. There you go again, use the unburrow to kill the small ones. Very possible, it saves you some time. Also, your burrowed mode Q will also one shot them pretty much. Alright, here fight's happening. Don't think I can get the RS, he's just ba barely ulted out of my uh, knock up there. I might still be able to get her, actually. Go for the ult on her, she flashes my ult damage. That's, like, the only way to really dodge this ultimate right now, after they kind of fixed it, because usually, like, before, you should, you were easily able to sidestep, and that, that was complete bullshit. But right now, they only flash, like, can only flash it if they time it properly. And she definitely did not. Right here, I think I'm just gonna look for the dragon, honestly. Yeah, gonna pick up this dragon right now. First dragon of the game, actually, that's not too good. Ooh, my spy's on cooldown. I think I might try to kill the Lee Sin then if it's on cooldown. Yeah, I went for the Lee Sin instead. As soon as my smite's on cooldown and I see the enemy jungler like hovering around here, I'm just gonna like try to go over and try to kill him because they don't necessarily need me to finish his dragon. If it was a Baron, then they need me to tank it probably, but. I just have to make sure that he doesn't jump in to steal it. So if I go over early and try to kill him, that's the best solution there. Now here on the next back, I am currently sitting on 2100 gold. So that's definitely going to be a cleaver on the next back. That's going to be the, the really big power spike because it's going to allow me to get way more armor penetration. So all my auto attacks will do much more damage and just overall ults and all that. So if you um, use that combo, like... If you just knock someone up, auto attack him into a Q reset, hit him a couple times, then E, then ult, they're gonna still have the applied armor pen from the black cleaver on them, which means that your ult's gonna deal even more damage since they are low and they will have a lot of, uh, they will lose a lot of armor. So that combination will just completely one shot anything. That's why Rexa is really good at just one v oneing literally anything. It doesn't matter what your opponent is. As long as they are not insanely far ahead of you, you should be good. I think I tried to go for I tried to go for like an ult there. Let's speed it up a bit. Let's see what happens here. Snipe someone. I tried to ult Lee Sim, but he killed him, so I guess that didn't work out for me. As soon as that happens, your ult goes on like a 10 second cooldown, which is not too bad at all. <laughs> Smite the cannon for them. Wow. Gotta disrespect that man. Honestly, at this point, the game's pretty much over. I have so much like control damage already. I can literally just one v one anything. I might be able to show you guys one more, like nice one shot or something, but I'm not sure if uh, this game's gonna end soon, because it looks like it's pretty close to ending. All right, right there again. This is like perfect example why Rexai is even a really good pick until he's in. All right, let's just speed up a tiny bit, and as soon as it happens. Alright, Lee Sin lands the Q onto Darius, which if he finishes this Q, Darius is probably gonna die since he's really low. But since I'm Rek'Sai and I can just knock him up out of his Q right before he hits it on him, he will just die right here probably. I also still have my ultimate up, I think. Yep, so he's definitely dead here. Do I go for the ult or what am I planning here? Bite him through damage, boom, and then ult him, probably finish him off. Yep, execute damage, nice. Wow. Cannon walks up and just straight up dies. Wow. That's some greed right there. I think he's tilted, dude. He's 0 10. I think he's definitely tilted. As you can see right now, this game, I'm building towards the random ones as well. I should just back for it right now, honestly, but um, yeah, I don't know. I guess I just want to clear my top side and then back. Make sure to keep clearing, on especially Rek'Sai, side, because you want to get that level advantage on the opponent that's going to really help you out in just winning games. As you can see right now, I am level 14 compared to like my, my solo laners. It's really good. I'm by far the highest level in the game. 
And that's mainly because I just keep my farm going. And try to like get stuff wherever I can. They surrender right now, but yeah. This is pretty much how you like how Rexha should be played. Like very early game focused. Try to 1v1 people as soon as you get some of your power spikes. And yeah. If you guys have enjoyed this video or learned anything from it, please do remember to hit that like button right below. Also, if you have any questions, make sure to ask those as well. I'll try my best to answer them for you. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye!